You may have seen some videos of the new M1 Pro MacBooks floating around out there, but I haven't seen any yet that go really in depth as to the editing capability of these machines. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're also gonna see if this particular machine can possibly beat out my $5,000 desktop Windows editing PC with an RTX 3080 and a Ryzen 3900X. And also 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get straight into the video. Starting off, we have a 16 inch base model M1 Pro MacBook. This is just a stock. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 10 core CPU, and 16 core GPU, which is going to be very, very interesting. And I'm gonna be testing this out on DaVinci Resolve 17, which is the most recent version. So getting straight into it, guys, let's open up Resolve. Now you'll see here, I have edited an unboxing video. That was entirely shot on my setup here and edited on this machine. We'll get to that in just a second. Let's open up an untitled project. By the way, in case you're asking, this is on the latest version of Mac OS Monterey. And as you guys can see here, I have a whole different bunch of footage that we can actually test out on this machine. So I have four different camera types. I have a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I also have a GoPro, which is in 4K, some RED 8K footage, some Sony A7 Mark III 4K footage, and an absolute beast of a camera, the Sony A7S Mark III in 4K. So typically, a lot of this footage here is not only difficult to edit, but just to play back. So what I'm gonna do is let's just start with the nice and easy, simple stuff. Let's get some Sony A7 Mark III 4K footage. Now, this is at 100 megabits per second, and I'll put up the codec and container and everything here for you guys now. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'm just going to drag and drop all of these clips over. We are going to change the frame rate. And then I'm just going to highlight all, go to the edit tab, and we're going to just slam that on. And as you guys can see, so again, guys, remember this is very compressed footage. So this typically doesn't play back very well. You can see right there, we're getting a couple of dropped frames here and there, but as we give it a few more seconds to buffer, that's looking pretty smooth to me. Now, to prove to you guys that this is gonna play back well, let's actually switch the timeline resolution to 4K. Now again, as you guys would have seen in my previous videos, especially on the M1 MacBook Pro, this can be a little bit difficult to play back. And as we can see there, that's working pretty well. Not quite 25 FPS scrubbing, but we're pretty much already there. And as you can see there, that's playing back perfectly fine in real time. We have the little green tick there next to the 25 FPS. So that kind of footage is kind of boring to be quite honest with you guys. Let's open up something a little bit more demanding. And this time we're actually going to bring in some Sony A7S Mark III 4K footage. Now, Again, this is very similar to the previous footage, except it's a much higher bit rate. You can see the actual specs of the footage here. So it's the Sony A7S Mark III. We have 4K resolution, XAVC-S codec, 140 megabits per second bit rate, 422 10-bit. So this is pretty much as good as it gets for handheld DSLR cameras, at least in my opinion. So again, we'll just jump in here and we will check the timeline resolution. As you can see there, we are in full 4K. And now we play this back. Absolutely buttery smooth, uh, not having any issues there at all. This is a two minute clip I'm playing at the moment. And if we scrub, that is scrubbing almost better than the previous Sony A7 Mark III footage I tried out. So what we're gonna do now is let's slap some stabilization onto this first two minute clip and let's see how long it takes. So we'll come down here to stabilization. We're just gonna leave it at the default perspective settings. We're going to stabilize. We're also gonna bring up activity monitor just to have a look at the RAM and the GPU usage. We're also going to bring up the GPU history chart here. Okay, so as you guys can see there, we are fully maxing out the GPU, which is really, really good to see. In terms of the CPU, uh, we are barely using any of the CPU at all, which 
makes sense. And I'll touch on this a little bit later in this video, but we're seeing a massive shift from CPU dependent tasks to GPU dependent or heavy tasks, especially when video editing on these new Macs. We can see here the RAM, we're only using about 10 gigabytes of RAM, zero swap, which is interesting because Mac OS does like to use a little swap memory. And you can see there that stabilization has just finished and that was a two minute clip. So that was very, very impressive. Okay, so before we get into the most interesting part of this video, let's test out some 8K footage from a RED camera. So this is raw footage, uh, incredibly hard to play back. You guys would have seen on the M1 Air and the M1 Pro last year, this was very, very difficult to play back. It did play back, but you generally had to drop the timeline resolution down to about 1080p. So let's drag these clips on. Let's zoom in. Timeline is in 4K, as you can see. And if we play back, so we're getting a little bit of stutter here. Uh, quite a lot, actually. It doesn't really seem to be playing back super, super well. You can see there the actual FPS counter is displaying red, uh, which isn't great. But you can also see that it is changing to green relatively quickly once we give the clips a little bit of time to buffer. And if we come back to the start now, And if we do some scrubbing, so you can see there the scrubbing is not smooth. We're getting quite a bit of choppiness there, but um, if you really had to edit like this, I totally could, it's not a massive deal. Again, we would just come into the timeline resolution. We would change that down to 1080p. And now if we play this back, you can see that we're getting a much better FPS and the scrubbing is still a little bit choppy, um, but it is, a lot better than playing it back in 4K. Okay, so now that we've tested out some different types of footage, if you guys wanna see any other different types of footage, such as that GoPro footage I have, let me know down in the comments section below. All right, let's get into the juicy part of this video. Let me just open this project up first of all. Okay, so like I mentioned at the start of this video, I've already fully edited a video on this Mac. Now again, this is the base model 16 inch M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, really weird name, Apple. Why oh, couldn't you just call it M1X? Anyway, I digress. Let's check out this timeline because it's very, very interesting. And this is what I typically edit on this channel if you've seen my previous videos. So this is a triple stacked timeline. As you can see here, we have three layers of footage. Okay, so the footage you're seeing on the very first level of the timeline is from the Sony A7S Mark III. That's handheld by someone off to my right in this video. So steady shot on, all settings and bit rate, et cetera, set to the max. And as you guys know from this type of footage, it's very, very heavily compressed, which means it doesn't play back very well at all on most computers. But as you guys can see here, we are playing this back perfectly fine. So if we skip to that Sony A7S Mark III footage, playing back perfectly fine. Again, this is in 4K timeline resolution. I never edit in 4K, I only ever edit in 1080p. And if we now play this footage back, you can see it works perfectly fine. The FPS counter is green. If I scrub this, that works totally fine as well. By the way, guys, I do have color correction applied to all of these clips. I don't personally use LUTs in my footage. I like to sort of color grade straight out of the camera with just some minor adjustments. Um, you can see here I have some curves. Uh, I've also adjusted some of the primaries as well, some other bits and pieces, uh, all working perfectly fine. And now if you guys see this second row footage, that is from my overhead cam, which you're watching right now. And that is the Sony A7 Mark III. It's plugged into a Ninja 5 external recorder and I'm recording in an uncompressed DNX HR codec, which means the file size is gonna be massive, but it is going to play back very, very easily. As you guys can see here, if I scrub, I'm having zero issues at all. And now finally, for the third level of footage, we have the talking head, the A-roll, which is the BMPCC6K, so from Blackmagic. And again, as we can see here, playing back in full 4K resolution, no issues at all. Now, I thought I'd also show you guys some fusion effects and some transitions. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to drop down my menu, I'm gonna to come to my effects, and we're going to add some more video transitions on. And now I'm just going to add in a transition, just a random one here. 
and I'm going to drop that on. I'm going to play back. So you can see that little bit of stuttering and difficulty in actually playing that back. And this isn't uncommon for these types of effects. These are very, very fusion heavy effects. But you can see there the fact that it's actually playing at all and you can even see the transition is actually better than my Windows editing PC with an RTX 3080. So if we come back here again and we just play it back and what we might also do is we'll come up here and we're gonna turn the render cache to smart. That's going to selectively render bits and pieces. You can see now that this is almost finished rendering. You can see the GPU has actually shot up quite a bit uh, since we've been playing around with this transition. Now that that's all rendered, you can see there it plays back perfectly fine. That was a very, very quick render. And if we now add a different transition to the end of this clip, that's going to render again. And you can see there that probably took about 10 seconds uh, until I was actually able to play that back in real time. So again, uh, triple stacked footage, everything's in 4K, black magic in 6K. Uh, I've got audio, I've got sound effects, I've got transitions, I've also got color correction, and it's playing back without an issue. And this is just the base model M1 Pro MacBook Pro. So we're not even talking about upgraded RAM or upgraded GPU cores or even upgraded CPU. This is bone stock. Okay, so let's try and render this bad boy out and we're gonna take a look at what we can achieve. So let's call this a test render. We're going to save this onto my desktop. And we're going to render in the settings I typically use for this YouTube channel. So I'm gonna change this to H265. By the way, guys, H265 has had a number of massive updates not only on the Mac, but on Resolve as well. So it's actually very, very efficient. Uh, 4K resolution, 25 FPS. We're gonna leave the encoding profile at main. I don't need main 10 or anything like that. We're going to add to the render queue, and now we are going to render. So this is about five minutes of a triple stacked timeline. As you can see there, it is flying through it pretty quickly. We can see the GPU immediately shoot up to 100%. And if we now bring up the activity monitor, let's check out the CPU and see what that is doing. Okay, so we can see here the CPU is again, really not doing that much at all. You can see we've actually got 26% of the CPU idle and actually switches up quite a bit. Um, so we are really not using much of the CPU at all. In terms of RAM, you can see the memory pressure there is getting into the yellow, so it's getting a little bit hard, but you can still see we've got plenty of memory left. We're using zero swap, uh, and this particular render is almost 40% done. Now, quick note as well, the fans are not spinning at all. They're completely dead silent. Okay, so the render has just finished and that finished in just two minutes and 19 seconds. Uh, so that is very, very, very impressive. Uh, it is only a four and a half minute render, um, but that's at the moment, that's actually beating out my Windows PC. They typically take about one minute to render a minute of footage. So if you've got an eight minute video, for example, it's gonna take roughly eight minutes to render. At the moment, this Mac is beating that PC. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Not supposed to be super in-depth. I've only had this thing for about three hours. So if you are interested in more in-depth videos and benchmarks, let me know down below. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.